Also on Saturday night, Joe Tessator, loyal listener, so give him a shout, alongside Jesse Palmer and company with Katie George on the sideline, will be in Baton Rouge for Auburn at LSU. This will be 7 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN. Auburn's coming off a bye week, and it's been really important, I think, for them to get healthy. And they've had a bunch of issues. Auburn has in staying healthy this year. Luke Deal's dealt with some stuff. Their starting guard, Cam Stutz, has, has dealt with a few things. Damari Alston, their running back, has had a shoulder injury since a and Wide receiver, Javarius Johnson, has had a hamstring. They've dealt with them I mean, defensively. They've had a lot as well. They're already without their starting linebacker, Austin Keys and Nickel Keontae Scott. They also lost Masai and Nasil Kite for the rest of the year in the Georgia game. And then Jalen Simpson's dealing with the bruised calf. So they've had like a ton of injuries Auburn has. So over the bye week, it's like, hey, what do you want Auburn to work on? Well, how about you just work on getting in the training room and getting healthy? Because that might give you the best chance to be successful in this game. Now, Auburn's trying to create some balance offensively. And I think that is a huge part of how they're going to try to attack LSU because LSU on defense has struggled. There's no denying that, but Auburn has been pretty good running the football. 200 yards a game or so, about 21st in college football, whereas LSU's defense allowing 163 yards per game, that's 96th nationally on that side of the ball. As far as yards per carry, LSU's given up five yards a carry. That's 119th nationally. Virginia Tech's the only Power 5 team that's worse than that. So I think Auburn's recipe in this one, they have to shorten the game. If you try to put Peyton Thorne and Robbie Ashford out there in the quarterback tandem that they've kind of gone about it with, if they try to go in a shootout, they're not going to win. Like the last two opponents against LSU basically said, hey man, go ahead, make it a track meet and we'll, we'll come out score you, outscore you. Now Ole Miss had success and was able to get it done. Missouri, not so much. So if it becomes a track meet, that is not good for Auburn. Auburn's passing attack against LSU secondary. We usually highlight the good versus good matchups in the game. How about bad versus bad in this one? This passing offense averages 156 yards per game. That's 119th in the country. Not good. I don't know if they've yet to find the go-to receiver. Now they have Rivaldo Fairweather, who I think is the toughest matchup, kind of at a tight end hybrid role. Jay Fair actually leads Auburn with 18 catches. Uh, and then Shane Hooks is the only re- receiver on the roster outside of the uh, aforementioned two that has more than 100 yards receiving this year. But he only has eight catches for 106 and a touchdown. So I I think they got to find a weapon that can take advantage of this defensive secondary because this group struggles a lot with difference makers on the perimeter. Luther Burden got off last week. Theo Weiss got off last week. You look at what what Ole Miss was able to do a couple weeks ago. That was significant as well. So I think Auburn's got to be able to find holes in the secondary because that's the path of least resistance when going against an LSU defense that has adjusted their front a bit. And I would imagine will be better against the run moving forward because of the alterations that they've made in the front seven defensively. As far as LSU's offense is concerned, we all know what Jaden Daniels is. Okay, We all know what Jaden Daniels is. He's amazing and has done an incredible job this year throwing the ball downfield. Started with the Mississippi State game. I mean, he has been lights out this season for an offense that that really needed him to be lights out and for a defense, frankly, that needed him to be lights out as well. But Logan Diggs' emergence over the last four games has been significant. You've looked at just how his reps have increased in the last four games. He went from nine carries to 14 to 19 to 24 last week against Missouri. And the efficiency is also getting better as well. So it appears like that run game has taken some of the pressure off of Jaden Daniels here over the last few weeks. Will that continue? against an Auburn defense that I think is pretty stout against the run. Look, the trends in this one, LSU's gone over the total in 10 consecutive games. It's the longest active streak in the FBS, and all five of Auburn's games against AP-ranked opponents have gone over the total since the start of last year. So if you're looking at trends, it would appear as though it's going to be a high-scoring affair. Meanwhile, LSU has covered four of the last five games as a home favorite. They're a heavy favorite in this one, 11 and a half points in favor of the LSU Tigers. I like LSU to get this one done. I also don't think it's going to be as high scoring as some people might think because I don't think Auburn is going to be able to create that type of problem for LSU defensively. I think LSU is going to completely sell out against the run. And I think LSU will dare Auburn to try to win the one-on-ones on the perimeter that Auburn has not consistently won. I think LSU wins this game comfortably at home, but this rivalry, at least over the last handful of years, has been chaotic. So sit back, 
and enjoy the action there on the bayou at night.